All right. Well, um, thank you everyone for joining us on today's webinar, which is a masterclass on how to use Coifin charting. Um, Coifin uh, does a lot of things really well. Uh, one of the things that we do really well that I think is very differentiated is our charting um, and the ability to uh, really visualize financial data and information. And from a product point of view, when we look at all our features and look at kind of like where everyone is, is clicking on and, and where everyone is spending time, um, charting is by far our number one feature. So a lot of you all are already using it. A lot of our users are using it. Um, and so this class is meant to be um, kind of a, a way for everyone to um, understand all the different capabilities that are available with charting, uh, because there's just so many different uh, bells and whistles, and we've developed the platform in in um, a, a couple of unique ways. And so there's a lot of um, kind of unique things that that I wanted to uh, show you as well that might be hidden and that you might not uh, know about. So let me uh, go straight to the demo. And um, just to remind you, this demo is being recorded. Um, I have my friend and colleague, Connor McNeil on the line. He is the one that handles our Twitter. So if you ever follow our Twitter and our tweets, he's the one that's tweeting, um, uh, especially if it's something smart, if it's something dumb, then I'm probably tweeting that day. And he's gonna be here answering any questions. So if you do have a questions, pop it into the chat uh, and I will um, I will um, uh, 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 handle that either at the end or Connor will uh, handle it during uh, uh, while we're talking about it. So let me uh, kind of go here and share my screen. Oops. It's right. All right. Um, so here's Coifin on the screen. Um, I was on calls all day and opened up Coifin a couple of minutes ago and I was like, wow, uh, we probably, uh, our, our data provider is broken. Why is everything uh, up so much? But uh, I guess there were some positive things that were said at the Fed meeting. And here we are uh, looking at, at a lot of the things that, that are up today. Um, just to give you a sense in terms of how uh, charting works and before I get into the specifics um, about charting, uh, wanted to kind of show you that whenever we have these charts, this is the homepage, whenever we have these charts in the um, in in a dashboard, in a market dashboard or whatever it is, you typically have this jump link, which is going to, what it's going to do is it's going to open up the chart here under security analysis. So if you're kind of here on the homepage um, or you're looking at charts under, let's say, uh, sectors, um, and you want to analyze that chart in more detail, you can always hit this jump link and that'll load the chart into the security analysis. And here you just have a lot more ability to add different uh, securities, uh, remove securities, uh, change kind of the, the way that this uh, chart looks with, with different variables. And I'll show you kind of what these all mean in a second. Uh, but just remember that you could always use that jump link to, to start and, and to basically jump into the charting security analysis section, uh, which, is, uh, which is over here. So just to get into kind of like more specifics on charting, um, we basically have three different chart types today. Uh, we actually have a fourth coming out uh, in the, the next day or two. Uh, but the three char chart types we have today are the historical graph, the intraday graph, and the performance graph. Um, think of the historical graph as the chart that does everything. So anything that you can really do um, in, in any of the other two graphs, you can do a historical graph. And, and so historical graph is, is sort of the Swiss army knife of charting. You can chart anything against anything else, transform series, do total return, price return, anything you want, but um, it's super powerful, but also very advanced. And that's why we created these other two chart types which is the intraday chart and the performance chart. So intraday chart real quick, you just have kind of the ability to look at one, uh, two, three, or up to 10 days of intraday data, add different data series here as well to be able to compare data series. Um, and then if you wanted to look at it on a percent basis as well, you can right click on the Y axis here and look at the percent uh, and be able to kind of see from zero to whatever percent all these series lined up. Um, and the performance chart, which many advisors use, so um, you uh, have probably used the performance chart. If not, then it's uh, uh, really, really useful. The performance chart, like the um, the label says, 
is used only for performance. And so the performance chart is really used for performance and more specifically total return. So whenever I have um, a security here, for example, the XLK, and I have the one year um, a time frame selected here, that means the one year total return of XLK is 44.54%. Uh, if I put Apple here as well, um, that means that Apple here is up 37.72%. And that is again, the total return. There's no way to do a price return on the performance chart. And so if you have a ETF or a stock in the, in the selection picker here, it'll show you the total return. The caveat here, and we try to confuse you with this, uh, and unfortunately we don't have the data today, but we're gonna get it soon or at some point next year, is if you type in an index, so if you have the S&P 500 index in the performance chart, that is the price return of the S&P 500 or any other index. So if you have uh, the Nikkei here or whatever other index, that will show you the price return. And that's because today our data provider doesn't give us or doesn't have the total return for indices um, so we, by default, show you the price return uh, because we don't have the total return. So just remember, in the performance graph, it's always total return, except when you're dealing with an index, that's the price return. I always recommend that people uh, use the ETF when they're uh, thinking about kind of an index. So SPY for, for S&P 500 or EWJ for Japan, um, and that will give you the, the total return on this performance chart. Um, so that's how that works. So uh, that covers kind of like on a high level, the three charts. Um, let me now move to the historical graph. This is kind of like really where the all the analysis is and and, and really how um, how you would use this. So the kind of basic building blocks of this chart is I have this left-hand side that controls the chart. I have my chart and then I have uh, my my settings here that are all over the place and a lot of bells and whistles. And I'll, I'll cover those um, in a little bit. But this is where you kind of control the chart. Um, and I have my selections here. I'll go over what this template is in a second. But here is where I can um, input a security and then input the series for that security. So for example, if I have um, XLU and if I have XLV um, and I have whatever it is, I could input those, those and input different uh, data sets for, uh, uh, for those securities. Um, and so if I you know, wanted to put in short interest for XLU, that would be here only for XLU. So the way to think about it is you have a security XOK, and then you have some data series underneath that gets graphed here. The um, other thing that I wanted to uh, uh, to note and to show you is that the the price chart or the price series here um, is pretty special. It's it's one of kind of like the unique series that when you click the setting box over here, you get different types of settings. So. I can make this a line chart. I can make this a uh, OHLC chart. I can make this a candle chart or a hollow candle chart or a bar graph or a mounted graph. So a lot of different flexibility on what you can do here. Um, I typically like looking at my stock charts with the OHLC. Um, you can also change the charting style when when the um, when the the day is up or down. So if it's an up day and I want it to be green because that's how I'm used to looking at things, you can change that here. If it's a down day and I wanted it to be, I don't know what you would use instead of red, but whatever other color you would sort of select it there, um, and that would kind of customize the way that this price graph looks. Um, and you could also do that for the volume styling bar. So my volume overlay, which is below here. I could look at the notional volume, I could look at the shares, or I could look at none. Um, I like looking at notional because I understand notional more than shares. Uh, so this would be $1 billion or $3 billion instead of shares. Um, and, and typically I would want my uh, volume up bars to match my uh, candle bars. And so here I would make that green. Um, and so now I have my my line here that, um, uh, that coincides with with green and red on, on up days um, and uh, down days. The next thing that a, I may want to do here is add a moving average. Um, and so if I wanted to add a moving average, I could do two things. I could either look for the moving average here. So I would um, maybe go under uh, basic market data. I don't find it here. I would look at price and performance. I don't find it here. I would look at um, I would look at technical indicators. I found it here. I have my simple moving average and I could add my simple moving average and it would ask me kind of what is the length I want. I would hit 50 days. 
and I could ad adjust that 50 days. So let's say I didn't want 50 days. I like to look at my stuff on a 25 day basis. I could change it to 25. This blue line is way too thick. Uh, so I want this to be a gray line. I want it to be thin. Um, and um, I could also change the frequency of my moving average. So if I wanted this to be a weekly moving average or something, I could do that here, but let me leave it as daily. I would click out of here. And then this would be kind of the chart that I'm left with. Um, just to kind of show you some, some other things here, the saved favorites is a series. If you're using a series over and over again in Coifin, you could always favorite it. So let's say moving average, I wanted to favor. I would go to simple moving average. I would hit the star. Um, and that means when I go to my saved favorites, my simple moving average would be here that I favorited now. The popular selections are, um, as the name implies, popular selection. So this is something when I'm, um, if I wanted to go through all the popular selections, they're here. But also when I'm, let's say in technical indicators, what will happen is the popular selections will be on top and then everything else will be alphabetized. Um, so that's kind of how maybe sometimes you wonder why is there an S here and B here and um, these popular selections with the little flame are on top. And then after the popular selection ends, this is alphabetized. Um, so especially in financials, uh, when we're thinking about uh, financials for stocks, that's that's kind of the, the way to, to think about it. So I added a moving average here. Um, I could also type what I'm looking for here. So I could type in moving average and it would search all the tools here. So here, um, let, let me type in EMA just to show you. So if I type in EMA, Instead of kind of selecting it here, I would then uh, select it here and, and let me just do a, the 20 day. And again, I'm going to make this a little bit gray just so it's not so obnoxious and maybe make a dot of whatever it is. Um, and then I can I can add some other series, right? So if I wanted to add PE um, NTM, I could do that here and that would add the PE NTM value. Um, if I wanted to add um, EV to sales, uh, I wanted to, uh, I could add the EV to sales value. Um, with some of these valuation metrics um, or um, let's say margins, one of the things that you can do on Coifin is really calculate the average and the standard deviation, which is super helpful. So um, let's say I wanted to look at the P ratio of XLK and I wanted to, I'm then gonna click on this indicator settings or the settings bar. And what I wanna do is I wanna add some statistical bands. So I actually wanna add a mean and plus and minus standard deviation. I think we have high, low, median as well. Um, and what that what that does is it basically calculates the mean and one standard deviation over this time frame. So if I look at it over the past 10 years, um, I now see that XLK, our friend, the tech ETF, the mean PE over the past 10 years is 20.2 times. Um, the one standard deviation is 24.6 times. Let's add another standard deviation to see kind of how far away it is. Okay, and so two standard deviations would be 29 times. So we're really kind of approaching, it's about a one and a half standard deviation move or away from the mean for XLK. So <clears throat> to the extent that you're looking at something that is uh, cyclical or something that is um, uh, kind of uh, adjusts to the mean, like a P ratio, like a margin, uh, don't forget that you do have these statistical bands that you can um, that you can um, uh, then overlay on a valuation series. Um, next thing, uh, what I wanted to show you, let me kind of get rid of um, EV to sales and let me put EV to EBITDA to show you kind of some other things. So let's say I have just another valuation measure. Um, I have some controls here on the chart um, that I wanted to show you. So one thing is that you can move these charts up and down, right? So I can, if I wanted to make one thicker or one thinner, I could do that pretty easily. Uh, let's say I wanted my EV to sales to be on top, and that's kind of like what I want the chart to be. There's, there are these arrows over here where you can move things on top. So I can make the EV sales go above or below. So that's how you would order, order the charts with these kind of arrows. Um, and then we also have the ability to then combine charts um, and basically merge charts together. So let's say, I'm just gonna put this back. Uh, let's say I wanted to have EV to sales and EV to EBITDA on the same chart. I don't want it to be separate charts. What I can do is I could use these nifty icons over here, which uh, if you hover over them, you'll see what they say. This is merged to above. That's not what I want to do. This is merged to below. That's exactly what I want to do. I could also merge this one to above if I wanted to, but I'm going to do this here. And all of a sudden, uh, these two are on the same chart. So um, remember these merge above and below icons. I will mention one kind of very quirky thing 
Um, we have a problem in our system that we're trying to solve, and uh, it's a very rare problem. But if you ever experience that you are looking at a legend and you don't have these merge buttons, sometimes they disappear. We can't figure out why, uh, but we will one day. And the settings uh, button over here in the settings, if you just hit graph styles reset, that's going to reset the settings and, and make these appear. So there's some kind of interaction in our graphing that um, makes the, the buttons disappear. We will figure it out why one day. But in the meantime, uh, some of you have emailed our help desk when this happened and we've told you how to fix it. But just so you know, that's a, a little trick on, on how to uh, fix um, that, uh, that issue. And then the other thing that you can do here is, um, is this axis here. There are some settings here. So if I right click on the axis here, I now get a, a, man, a max and min value that I could change. So if I wanted kind of like the, um, you know, this makes sense, but let's say I wanted my, my min to be uh, 10 times, uh, I could do that, that disappears. So let me put that back to zero. Um, I could also make the scaling uh, log or linear or I could turn the group axis on or off. What this means is if the if the lines have the same unit uh, and here they're the multiple, then I'd be able to group them on one axis. But if I turn this off, uh, then all of a sudden, um, then all of a sudden then these two are gonna be on different axes. So I have my EV to sales on one axis and EV to EBIT on another axis. And you could see that these are very correlated over time. Uh, but if I ungroup them, and, and turn sorry if I group them and turn the grouping on, um, even though so real quick, even though these are correlated, that correlation is much harder to see because the the scale is the same for for each one of these axes. So that's pretty important and just keep that in mind. A um, couple of other things that I wanted to show is this expand box. If you're ever looking at a lot of different uh, uh, kind of graphs together and and maybe you wanted to look at one more uh, closely. You could always expand this, and, and so that would take up the whole screen, and then you can uh, hide this as well, um, and so that would be one way to um, to kind of look at something very quickly and then hide it back. And then the last thing is you could always, um, there are these eyes over here where you can do the, the eyes and unhide things and hide things on the graph. So in case you don't want to delete the tile, so I don't want to delete even the sales, I just want to hide it, I have this eye here. Um, and that's pretty standard on a lot of graphing software to be able to do that so you don't see it. Okay. Um, let me just catch my um, let me just catch my breath here. Um, one thing that um, I wanted to kind of highlight before we move on, um, a lot of folks um, ask us about uh, relative charts. So that's something that, that, that people are always interested in, in like, hey, I want to look at XLK versus SPY. Uh, the way you do that in Coifin is by doing the uh, the colon, the relative series, so XLK colon SPY. Uh, that's going to basically divide one series by the other. And then I can look at um, uh, kind of the ratio of this over time. If I have XLK over SPY, I can't look at anything else. I can't look at valuation. I can't look at any of the other metrics, because we don't have that for a relative series. But if you just want to see kind of like one ratio divided by another, uh, you can use the colon to uh, to do that. So that would that's kind of like one way one way to do that. Let me go back to SPY. Um, the um, other things that I wanted to uh, point out on this graph is uh, down here. One of the kind of like really important um, um, things that we have is this adjusted button. So um, this adjusted button, what this means is this is gonna display the adjusted price versus the unadjusted price. Um, and so what happens is when a stock pays a dividend or an ETF pays a dividend, the stock price falls because there's a dividend that's paid. So the shareholders get cash, the existing uh, kind of stock falls because that cash was returned to shareholders. So it's, it's what's called a corporate action. Um, nothing really happens in the company that makes the stock price fall. It's the fact that a bunch of cash from the balance sheet or from the ETF went into shareholders' pockets, um, and that makes the price fall of the of the stock. Um, and so what, um, what, what's common to do is called adjusting the price. And what adjusting the price does, it goes back in history and basically adjusts for that drop or that decline of the dividend. So 
If I click uh, adjusted versus unadjusted, you'll see the, the current price is always the same. The current price never, ever, ever changes for adjusted versus unadjusted. What does change is the historical price based on the dividend. Um, and if I uh, can show you maybe SHV here as, a, as an example, this is a, um, a short-term ETF that all it does is pay a dividend. If it, this is the adjusted price, so here what we're doing is we're adjusting historically the um, uh, the every time a dividend is paid. But if I click the unadjusted price, then you can see kind of what happens. This is without adjusting for the dividend, the you know the the ETF here goes up in value because it's it's paying some kind of dividend yield, and every every time it pays a dividend yield, it sort of drops because that transfer of that corporate action is happening. And so this is a, a really extreme way of visualizing unadjusted versus adjusted, but that's exactly why we uh, why I think it's it's um, necessary and important, uh, and investors should use the adjusted price as the default. Um, we do have some investors that say I want to use unadjusted, um, so we do have that option. But just remember what this is, does. If you want to read more uh, about adjusted versus unadjusted, we do have a help article here. Uh, so if you type in Coifin adjusted, um, this will bring up the help article, Coifin adjusted versus unadjusted prices. Um, this is something where we kind of explain what adjusted versus unadjusted means. And another way to think about it is it's price return versus total return. So if you're looking at the um, unadjusted series, you're going to look at really the price return. If you're looking at the adjusted series, you're going to be looking at the total return um, I think even I think in all cases you want to look at the adjusted series. My personal opinion, but there are uh, people in the investment community who disagree with me, um, and and think that uh, unadjusted is the right way to look at it. We give you both options, but just remember kind of like what what that means here. Um, the other thing that um, I wanted to point out here is uh, just some other kind of tool tips here. Uh, this is the the crosshair. So the crosshair it it, it sort of allows you to hover over and. And and see this uh, these values here. If you turn it off, uh, you won't be able to do that. Or uh, oh, that's um, sorry. It, the the crosshair. Uh, I got this confused. This is what I just uh, talked about, which is the uh, pointer. So if you turn this off, you won't be able to see these values here. This is the crosshair, <laughs> which is a little different. The crosshair is is that x and y. Um, sort of a battleship cross here. So if I have it on, I could see the X and Y values as I'm hovering. Uh, if I don't have it on, then those X and values aren't there. Um, so just the preference, some people like to off not to kind of mess with the visualization. And then the other thing I wanted to point out here is the um, is the axes. So uh, I can turn on my uh, my axes. I could, I could either uh, turn them on uh, fully, or I could just have the horizontal lines, or I could just have the vertical lines, or I could have no axes, um, and so that would be a way for for me to um, uh, to have kind of like a cleaner slate. So that's that option, and then this option is is um, what we call the the legend label, which is right here. Um, when this is going to come, um, when this is going to be useful for you is if you're looking at something like. Let me go back to my sectors, um, and you kind of like pop this open. And you have just a lot of different items here, and then this is covering the chart. Uh, what you might want to do is just turn this off, and this becomes a lot cleaner. Uh, so now I don't have these uh, stupid legends. I still have kind of like my y-axis here um, in terms of uh, uh, showing you the values, but I don't have these these legends. So again, just a setting that you should be familiar with um, and, uh, and and should know about. The um, other things that I wanted to kind of show you here on um, uh, on these series is just you know total returns for uh, for advisors is really really important. So just wanted to make sure you know some of the um, total return metrics that we have here. So um, uh, we have you know you could have the total return series. So what this does is uh, starts the total return from zero up until here, very similar to the performance metric. Um, let me show you some other ones. If I wanted to have Another uh, kind of total return here, I could have investment growth. Um, so I know some advisors love looking at investment growth and sort of like uh, thinking about it over the past 20 years. If I invested uh, X amount, if I invested $10,000, what would it be today? You could change that $10,000 to $100,000 or a million or a dollar, uh, whatever you want. So that's pretty flexible. So just uh, keep in mind, we, we do have that uh, investment growth. 
Um, then we'd have some other kind of tools here that I wanted to mention to you. So one is the uh, the total return. This is the rolling total return. Um, this is something we introduced recently that um, a lot of folks don't know about, but definitely uh, very useful. So if I wanted to kind of look at the rolling three-year kegger, um, I wanted to uh, look at um, the total return. Oops, that's not it. So it's not finding it. So I'm back in price and performance, total return annualized, five-year kegger. Um, so let's say the, those are kind of like the, the two keggers that I wanted to look at. I'm just going to hide this over here. Um, and I'm just going to, let's say, get rid of this. And I'm going to have this here. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to show me the, the total return uh, kegger for, uh, for three years and five years over kind of some period um, and so let's say I want to look at over the past 20 years and I'm going to look at XLK versus let's say SPY. And I'm going to just look at the, let's say five-year Kegger. So I'm going to hide this and I'm going to hide this. Um, so now what this does is it shows me the, uh, the five-year Kegger for XLK, the five-year Kegger for SPY and showing kind of how that moves over time. Um, I think there's an opportunity here to make this a little bit nicer by Maybe instead of yellow, I can make this blue and make this a, uh, a uh, sorry, green and, and make this a, a, um, a shadow here. And then maybe this purple one, I can make uh, dark gray or whatever it is. Um, so this could be, um, this could be kind of like a, an interesting chart to show if you're trying to compare an ETF versus the SPY. Um, and then just being able to show kind of like two rolling returns uh, of two different instruments. So um, so kind of that that role in Kegger is really important. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to show you on the total return side is um, that was the annualized. So that's kind of like the um, the, the rolling uh, annualized Kegger. We also have periodic. So you could look at kind of like either monthly returns or daily returns or quarterly returns. Um, I think advisors probably typically look at quarterly and, and annual returns. So if I did annual returns here, uh, what this would do is, is kind of like for each year here, uh, it would look at the annual total return uh, for, for that year. So uh, my year to date is up 50, kind of 3%. And then last year, um, my return is minus 27%. We do have kind of a limitation in our graphing system today, the way that um, this is going to get very technical. But um, this 2022, even though the label is July 18th, because that's how we need to gra uh, graph it, this is from for the year 2022, not not through July. So the current year is through through um, the the current year is through uh, year to date, and then the other years are um, through December. One way to look at this, and I know that's pretty confusing, is you can actually um, look at the um, you could look at the table here if you go to high table or show table then we'll have all the returns here. So you could see here, the uh, the 53.97% is through uh, 12, 13. And then all the other points here are through year end, right? So if I'm looking at the point here um, of minus 27.73%, that's actually through year end 2022 or 2021. So um, apologies that it's a little bit confusing with this uh, mouse over label. Uh, maybe that's why you, uh, you might wanna turn it off so you're, you're not confused by that. Uh, but this mouse over is just the way the graph is designed. Um, we don't have a, a easy way to to fix this label, but just so you know, when you're using total return periodic per year, um, this is going to be uh, for every single year as the uh, as the data here um, says. So that's on the on the total return side, um, and then we do have some other metrics that you might find useful that I wanted to highlight to you. Um, that have to do with, uh, we do have kind of the beta here. So if you wanted to look at the beta of something, we have that if you wanted to kind of look at the 252 day beta versus SPY or another instrument, you could do it here. Um, and we also have the, uh, let's say the, um, some other stuff like volatility and correlation. So if you wanted to look at the, uh, you know, uh, three month vol or something, uh, that's the realized vol. And if you wanted to look at the correlation, this is the um, this is the correlation. And again, you could set the time frame. So if I wanted to look at the three month, it'd be sixty three day um, versus SPY. That's kind of what it would be. 
And so that would be kind of the rolling correlation over time. So that's kind of on a high level, some of the most um, important uh, data points, but you uh, feel free to kind of look around here. Um, and uh, we do have ETF flows, NAVs, shares outstanding. Um, we, you know, we recently introduced all the valuation metrics for ETFs. So if you're looking at kind of uh, price to sales or, or uh, price, price to earnings or buyback yield or whatever it is, uh, we do have uh, that information for, for ETFs today. Um, the, um, the other thing I wanted to um, kind of show you is now that I have some of these series set up. So let's say like I, I, um, I want to look at my graph with a, um, with a yearly total return. I want to look at the beta, not that this is too much stuff. So let's say I want to look at the volatility in the beta uh, over the past 10 years for a, um, uh, for a ETF. Uh, one of the things that you probably don't want to do is recreate this chart every time you log into Coifin. So that's where the, the, the templates come in. And what the templates allow you to do is they allow you to save all these series so that when you come in and look at this for a another security, all those things are saved today. So let me save this as, I'm going to save this as my total return and beta uh, template and show you what that looks like. And so now I have a total return and beta template. It's in this drop down here at the end. Uh, it's also in this template uh, folder here. Um, and so if I go to, um, let's say tomorrow I log into Coifin, um, I pull up, uh, let's say, uh, not Q, let me do like um, you know, EWJ and uh, something else. So the Japan shares, and I go to my historical graph, I can then select my template here and look at TR beta and all these, um, these, these series are loaded. So I can sort of create templates of how I look at graphs or how I want to look at graphs pretty easily so that I don't have to load them every single time. Um, whenever um, you change something on a graph, you have to save that in the template if you want it saved. So even if I change like 10 year to, uh, let's say I want to look at this at 10 year, and let's say all of a sudden I want to look at my, um, I want to look at just like vertical axes as my, um, uh, as, as my setting. I could save that in my template and it's going to remember that. So any settings that you want to change, make sure to save that in the template. So I save that. I go to log into Coifin tomorrow. I look at XLU and I pull up my graph template and then I go to TR. Um, that is going to save all the settings here, including the axes, including the time frame, um, including anything that you want to change here. So make sure that um, if you do want to change the setting on your template, you're saving that. There's also a way to have auto save on. So if you turn auto save on, any changes you make to the graph template will save over the template. I don't have that on. Um, I'd say most people don't have that on because if you're just changing a time frame once or you're adding something, you might not want to have that changed. Um, so I typically have my my auto save off, but just remember that um, that you can um, that you can do that. Um, the the other thing that um, just so you're aware is uh, because sometimes I want to start with something new and I don't want to work in the template. We do have something called an unsaved template, which is kind of like a blank sheet of paper. So in here, I can start, uh, let's say, working with with whatever you know, dividend yield trailing twelve months, um, and you know, whatever um, whatever else I want to add here. Uh, and then I would save this as a template. So just remember that you have this unsaved template here that you could save as a template, and that unsaved template is your um, is your way of um, of creating a, a new a new template and, and starting from scratch. Um, and then once you do have your templates, um, this is a pretty easy way to kind of go through your templates. So let's say if I have XLU, these are all different templates that I've saved. Um, if you want to see kind of like what they are, they're here, but I have my price and volume template. I have my moving average template. I have my uh, weekly averages template. Um, I have my technicals template. Um, I also have a lot of templates for, for uh, kind of short interest, uh, price target. Um, I uh, rolling one year change. So whatever configuration that you want to find for um, different securities, different returns, different series, you could save that as a template. Um, and that's pretty useful. And then you can sort of go through these templates pretty uh, methodically and sort of see what's going on. Um, some of these templates that I have here saved are for single stocks. So let me just show you what that looks like. Um, so if I have Apple here, I have my my EPS um, uh, template here of estimates. I have my my revenue, my revenue growth, um, my dividends per share. 
Um, so you can really kind of like flick through these templates and be able to uh, to be able to see um, uh, different ways of, of slicing and, and dicing the data. The, the other thing that you can do, which is pretty interesting, is if you do have a template, so let's say this is my uh, EPS and estimates template that I want to look at for a stock. Um, this is, um, uh, you can also kind of open up a, well, let me go here. Um, this is my template here. You could also open up the side panel here. And the side panel has a watch list, news or, or movers, but I open up one of my watch lists. I have my Rob's watch list selected. If you select any of these stocks, it'll load it into the, into the graph here. So I could kind of go through my my security list, um, and then see this template, the EPS NCM estimates template with um, with my watch list. So I could sort of cycle through and then be able to say kind of like, hey, where is price diverging from estimates um, and be able to do that pretty quickly uh, by just kind of going uh, through that list. Uh, so that's that's pretty, pretty helpful. Um, and then the last kind of hint that I'll give you on these templates is once you do save a template, it becomes a shortcut here. So um, let's say my uh, short interest template is um, so I edited it. Ah. Um, when you create it, it does give you a shortcut like G29. So if I if I wanted to kind of use this shortcut and uh, what I would do is I put my mouse here, I would hit back backspace on my keyboard. That's a way to activate the search box. Um, and I would do Apple uh, and then G29. And that would pull up my, you know, short interest here template, which should say I have short interest. You could also um, um, type in, I think, short interest, and that would find it. But Apple short interest G29. Um, I could select it here, and that would pull up my template. So just remember that the search box is a way to access your templates. You could either click in here and start typing. So for example, um, Apple moving average, and it would find my my moving average templates here. Uh, or if you didn't want to use your mouse, you could hit backspace, uh, ticker, enter, then the shortcut. So here I would be uh, saying 29, enter, and that would pull up my template pretty quickly. So just a, a fast and efficient way to get through the platform by using shortcuts um, with your uh, with your keyboard. Okay, cool. Um, so that's a lot of stuff on templates. I know we're kind of going through uh, here pretty quickly. Um, next thing I wanted to show you are these um, annotation tools down here, uh, which are which are pretty interesting. So if I just start with a uh, with a new template or an unsafe template, and I just have my charts here, um, there's a bunch of tools here that you can use. Um, so um, you can kind of annotate different things. So if I wanted to circle that, um, um, a lot of our uh, kind of like more technical users will use this to create different resistance support lines. So if I have a um, a resistant line here that I wanted to track. I could do that here. Um, if there's some value that you wanted to kind of highlight, you could do that as well. So let's say this is kind of like a value that I wanted to highlight. And this is a value that I wanted to highlight. Um, you know, and this is a value that I wanted to highlight. So I'm going to delete. Um, that's, that's an interesting tool. So you could kind of play around with it here. There's a um, percentage change tool, which is kind of interesting. So I could see from you know, from the low in October to now, uh, Apple stock is up eighteen percent. Um, so that's kind of something that's that's pretty useful. That's this percentage tool over here. Um, I could do that for kind of like any point or any other points on the graph. Um, and then to the extent we have any Fibonacci retracement, folks, uh, we ha we have the the Fibonacci tool here as well. So if you wanted to kind of measure Fibonacci retracement. Um, we have that here and then as well as rays and, and circles and stuff like that. So this, this could all be really helpful if you're trying to annotate the chart. Um, the way these annotations work is they're saved automatically for the ticker and template combination. I don't have a template here selected. Let me select this template. So if I have my template here called price and volume and I have a, um, uh, a circle here because there's a gap here and I leave it here, this is automatically saved for Apple price and volume. So if I go to Meta, that circle is not there. But if I go back to Apple, that circle will be there. So we wanted to kind of save those annotations automatically for every ticker and um, uh, and template combination. So just be aware of uh, of, of how that works. Um, and then the um, the other thing that I would uh, kind of point out here is once you do have a, a graph that you like. 
Um, so let's say I am looking at my, let's see, monthly total return graph. So let's say this is a graph that I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, and I'm going to go back to SPY because we're dealing with a lot of ETFs here. Um, and I wanted to look at this over the past 10 years. Um, I can I can share this graph and I can print this graph. So I could print it here. Um, I have my, my graph here. And then I could add a logo here as well. So um, I can add a logo here by going to customize. Um, and then I had this logo before. But if you upload an image um, and you have your logo. So let's say here I had my Hightower logo. If I worked at Hightower. I could upload that and that now becomes part of my graph. I could give this a title. So let's say this is Apple monthly returns. Uh, you typically want to make this like 30, which is probably default to that, but that's the title. Um, and now what I can do is I can kind of change the dimensions. This is pretty fancy. Uh, what I typically do is I right click, I copy image and I paste it into an email. Um, we also have the, the ability to download this chart as a PNG but right-clicking copy image and pasting that into an email, PowerPoint, whatever, is probably the, the easiest thing to do. So just remember, you have the ability to uh, to kind of um, uh, print these charts and, and, and highlight these charts uh, to, uh, to users as well. Um, so cool, I, um, I covered a lot here. Um, let me jump to uh, just maybe some, um, some workflows on uh, for for the single stock people. So the uh, single stock folks here, I know a lot of people here don't deal with single stocks uh, to the extent that you do. Uh, just wanted to cover some kind of more specific functionality for single stock. So um, if you're looking at a single stock, we uh, we do have a ton of data here, including all the financials and valuations. And then go to an unsafe template here. Um, and so, and by the way, this is how you delete all the annotations very quickly. Um, we have all the all the financials here, as I mentioned. Uh, one of the things that you can do, which is kind of unique to Coifin, is you can, let's say I'm looking at uh, total revenue over the past uh, 20 years, and uh, I'm going to make this a bar chart because that's a little bit easier to see. Uh, one of the things that you can do is you can transform this series into a growth rate. Um, so for example, I can look at the uh, growth rate here. So this is as reported. I could look at the quarter on quarter change of the growth rate here. So, um, you know, even if you're not looking at stocks every day and someone asks you about a stock, this is a really nice way to look at the growth profile of a company, just seeing is the growth cyclical, where are we in the cycle, um, right? So for Apple, I could definitely see that the growth is more cyclical today than it used to be. Um, so starting in 2014, we've had the iPhone replacement cycle that has overshadowed the revenue of Apple. Um, and so we've definitely had this uh, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Um, and what's interesting is typical, you probably want to, you know, be buying Apple when the Apple uh, revenue growth is negative quarter over quarter and starting to recover, you know, similar to kind of what it did in 2019, similar to what it did in 2016. Um, this is not financial advice, but this is a good high level way of looking at, at growth rates um, and um, and something that, that you should uh, definitely be aware of. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, this kind of new functionality that we have coming out is a lot of our single stock folks, what they get frustrated with is, is if they'll have like Apple and Amazon. So let's say they'll have Apple and Amazon here um, and they'll have like AMD um, and these should all be probably on. on um, oh, there you go. You see guys, I told you that th it disappears. So I have this thing disappear, my, my, little, um, my little icons here. So I'm gonna go to settings, I'm gonna go to reset and here they are again. Uh, God darn it, we're going to catch that bug one day. But um, you could hit this plus button, this plus button. And what um, what our fundamental users get frustrated at is if I wanted to add PE to this, so let's say I wanted to compare the PE of all these things, I would have to go in here, type in the PE, you know, go in here, type in the PE, uh, go in here, type in the PE. This is all very annoying because we know we hate typing and we hate using our keyboard and, and using a lot of strokes. Um, so this is not very uh, useful when you're comparing a lot of stocks or a lot of different securities. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a new graph type called fundamentals. Um, you can actually see a preview of it if you kind of go to um, in the URL instead of G, if you do GMA, um, that's the, the shortcut that we're using. So this is a new type of, of graph that we're introducing where you basically put in the tickers in the group and you put in the metrics as a group. So if I wanted to Again, look at the, you know, if I have, um, let's say, uh, a bunch of stocks here, Intel and, you know, CRM and, and whatever it is, 
Um, and I wanted to uh, look at price to sales here, instead of doing it for every single one, I could just hit price to sales. If I was able to find it, um, let's see, price to sales. Ah, here it is, price to sales, NTM. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna actually draw the price to sales for all the stocks automatically. Um, what's cool is that the colors stay consistent. So Amazon here and Amazon here are both purple or yellow. Um, so if you're comparing like, let's say revenue growth or margins or multiples across a lot of companies, this is a fast way to do it. So this graph type we're calling fundamentals is just a different way of grouping the different functionality. We'll also probably give you a, an ability to look at the table and look at some averages later on, but um, it'll be kind of here under fundamentals. If you want to kind of look at the beta of it and, and uh, look at the unreleased version in the URL instead of G for, if you go to graph, uh, you have kind of, oops, one template. you have G here, uh, instead of G, just put G M A. Um, and then you'll be able to kind of hack our system and, and see that graph and, and play around with it. Um, and let us know um, if you uh, if you have any feedback. Um, so I um, um, I went through a lot here. Um, the last two things I'm gonna I'm gonna cover very quickly are um, where to use these templates in Coifin. Um, so in lots of charts is is one area. If you're looking at charts, this is a way to just look at kind of a ton of charts at once. So if I wanted to look at six or nine or twelve or whatever it is, this options button is where I kind of want to look it at. Uh, where I want to select that. And here's where I select my ETF or watch list. So if I'm looking at, let's say my SaaS stocks, they would all load in here and I could just kind of flip through and, and look at these stocks. And maybe I don't have a lot of stocks here. So let me look at um, actually like uh, S&P 500 that would be quicker. Um, and then the kind of benefit here is that you can also select one of your templates. So remember kind of that template we created, which is TR and, TR and beta. You could select your 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 template here um, and then all of a sudden it's going to kind of create the, this chart for the S&P 500 in the lots of charts mode. So if you wanted to look at something on a high level, this is a pretty kind of um, busy chart and it doesn't have um, a lot of time frame. So we kind of we look at the past 10 years. Um, so this, this is kind of like uh, a lot of data that's, that's uh, uh, appearing here. So taking a little while to load, but you can sort of play around here. If you're looking at something thematically for a broad universe, you could load up the charts here. Um, and then the last thing is in my dashboards, if you if if you wanna create your own dashboard. Um, so I have a lot of dashboards here. Let me create a new dashboard uh, called, uh, called uh, you know, demo dashboard. Um, in here, I can start loading charts um, that are, again, my templates. So if I wanted to load a chart here instead of historical price, I can uh, click on this top bar over here, um, uh, select TR and beta, and then add Apple here. And then, you know, this is the, um, this is the TR and beta for, for Apple here. Uh, but then I can select any of my, my other kind of charts here that I have. Um, so for example, rolling uh, one year price change or whatever it is. Um, so just remember that you can uh, load up uh, your your uh, graphing widgets in my dashboards. You can select the templates that you want to be able to see the templates and and, and really kind of customize what you're looking at. Um, and the way to uh, to load tickers into here is you can either um, these are now connected. These widgets are in the A category. So if I change this Apple to let's say Microsoft, um, that's going to change for uh, for for both of them. If I Um, if I if I change it to whatever, it's gonna it's gonna change it for both graphs. If I ungroup it, so let's say this is in B and this is in A, then these are not going to be connected. So I have Apple here, I have Microsoft here, um, and then the last thing I can do is add a widget here, which is a watch list widget. And if I connect this watch list widget to one of the charts, so for example B and B, I can then select any ticker here, and that'll change the chart. So that's kind of like another way to load the chart here is by selecting the the watch list. Um, and having the the chart display there. So I'll pause there. Uh, that is a lot. Uh, you'll have the recording to kind of look at there, but uh, pause there and see if there's any questions.
Okay. So um, um, Chris asks, will mutual funds reflect cap gain distribution when using purchase date quantity average cost and any update on getting total gain loss as total return and not just NAV movement? Um, so uh, Chris, we don't have any update on the um, on the kind of like the portfolio and using total return. I know that's something you and I have emailed about. Um, and the uh, total gain loss uh, return versus just NAV. Um, I'd be kind of curious if you um, if you wanted to um, either clarify that or uh, I think you could request to speak on the mic. But you know, curious how how that maybe I'm not understanding what you mean uh, of the total return versus versus NAV. Um, because the total return that we show is inclusive of distributions, um, and the NAV is is um, uh, just the price. So, just curious what you mean by that, because I think I'm not understanding something. But feel free to request the mic and 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 um, uh, and speak on the on the Zoom, or you can type in your question, or we could email about this afterwards. Um, next question comes from uh, Graham. How can we track in-house strategies within Coifin? Um, so. Grant, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by in-house strategies. Um, if it means creating a custom series, like if I wanted to create a custom, um, if I have some kind of custom series that I wanted to upload to Coifin, um, that's something that we've been asked about a lot and, and is on our roadmap. Um, but let me know if you mean something else by uh, in-house strategies or, or if that was it. Um, and then Bogdan, how's it going? Um, can we see your stock-based comp versus revenue template? Wonder how you look at it. You and Connor always have a nice visual. So Bogdan, what's uh, great about this um, uh, this call and, and something I forgot to mention, thank you very much for reminding me. Um, in the next 24 hours, you're going to have access to all these templates. So if you go to historical graph template and you click new, oh, you actually have it right now. Um, this is uh, a good way to mention that if you uh, go to uh, graph templates and you click new, these templates are all going to appear here. So these are all the templates that I have in my uh, system. So if you wanted to look at stock-based comp and revenue, you could hit that and that would uh, get all the information here in terms of revenue and stock-based comp. So there you have it. Um, Uh, Bill is asking, on a watch list, can you delete all tickers at once or do they have to be deleted one at a time? Uh, Bill, you can delete all the tickers at once if you want. So on your watch list, one of the things that you can do, um, so this is, a, I think, a burner watch list for me. Uh, let's say you had 500 tickers, whatever. You could click this box on top, which is going to select everything. And then once you do that, we have a um, an action called bulk action. So you can actually delete these tickers, which I'm going to do here. Uh, and that's going to delete all the tickers at once. Um, so Stephen is clarifying. I think Graham means using model portfolios to track in-house strategies. Um, so, um, you know, we have um, we have model portfolios that we released in September. Um, so this is kind of like where you can uh, track an in-house strategy. Um, so let's say this is kind of my balanced U.S. fund. Um, I have my 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 fifty percent weighting in BND and VTI. I could have different allocation periods here, um, and so here's kind of like where I can track my strategy um, and be able to chart and stuff like that. Um, and you'll be able to to look at these in the G chart pretty soon as well. But um, thank you for clarifying that and and our model portfolio functionality is how you would do that. Uh, when will we be able to download model portfolio reports? Um, Pretty soon we'll be working on um, kind of reports in, in the first quarter and that's definitely on our roadmap. And I know that's something that you all have asked about um, a lot. So we hope to deliver that pretty soon. Um, and then Jared is asking, can we create our own ticker being a basket of stocks and then do all the technical analysis on this new ticker and then rebalance the ticker every quarter? Um, the Jared, the answer is no. Um, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to create a model portfolio, um, which is a, a, a basket of tickers. So right now, like, let's say my model portfolio, if I create a new one, um, is going to be like, you know, uh, Tesla and uh, NVIDIA and uh, Apple and uh, let's say Amazon. And I'm just going to uh, equalize the weights here. Um, and I'm going to rebalance, let's say, every quarter. And I'm going to create this portfolio. 
I'm going to name this my portfolio, my TSNAA portfolio, TNOC. And I'm going to create that here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a ticker here. So you'll be able to use that ticker. Right now, you can look at the, this kind of like performance chart. You'd be able to use that ticker in the, um, well, you can actually do that today, which is, again, a hack, but we're going to make this easier for you. If you take this ID here, which is uh, the user ID, 0Q, whatever, which we create for you, you can actually put this in the um, in the G chart here today. And uh, sorry, I'm, this is kind of getting a little bit away from. So if I just change this here to, yeah. So so this is like taking that that what we call Coifin ID or a kid, uh, zero Q one hundred three RK from the model portfolio, putting it in the graph. Um, and you'll be able to to kind of do more technical analysis on it. So the answer is you can't really do today unless you do this URL hack that I showed you, but you'll be able to do kind of like more technical analysis and stuff on these portfolios. Um, can I track the live performance of a portfolio when changing the weights every five days? Should I do that in a model portfolio component or better under a watch list? Um, so... If you're trying to track the live performance of a portfolio um, and you need the performance like today, like how the portfolio is performing today, then then the watch list is, is the way that you would kind of set that up. So I would you know set up my Rob's portfolio here. I would have the quantities, I would have the weights and you would sort of need to adjust the quantity and the weights every day uh, or every five days or whatever it is. And, and that's how you would kind of get to, to the final number. Uh, or, or get to this kind of, um, you know, my total gain loss on the day. Do I have this? Uh, sorry, I don't have this. Let me just add this, my total return in the one day. So my total return here, um, one day for the stocks here, and then my weighted average because I, I hit my summary row and I have weighted average. My weighted average for the portfolio is kind of this number. So you can follow this in the watch list. You can't look at a historical time series. So you wouldn't be able to look at anything like um, if I have a portfolio here and, and looking at a uh, performance chart. So in a, in a, through a watch list, you can't do this today, um, but you could look at just the snapshot. So it depends on, on what you're trying to, uh, to do. Uh, and then Graham um, email our help desk. Uh, we'll give you a, a pro free trial. If anyone else wants a pro free trial, Email our help desk, We're happy to do that for seven days. Um, and then we have uh, a ton of videos on YouTube for uh, model portfolios. Um, and um, um, you could check those out. And then if it doesn't answer your question, we can schedule a demo as well. Uh, Armin, can I track the, oh, we answer that. Um, and then, uh, cool. John, thank you very much. Glad it helped. Cool. All right. Um, I think that's it. Um, thanks everyone. Uh, my email is robertcoifin.com. Connor is connor.mcneil at coifin.com. Please just let us know if there's anything. Uh, and thanks again for being a Coifin user. Happy holidays, and we'll talk to you soon.